coming up on this edition of Southwest TV News. Back in September, sod was turned on the new $108.5 million long-term care facility in Swift Current. And as local residents await the new 225-bed facility, the community's 20% share of $15.7 million is yet to be raised. As the year quickly draws to a close, construction companies were kept busy in Swift Current with a number of projects. The Swift Current Fire Department is going high-tech and adding another avenue of getting its emergency information out to the public. Thanks for joining us here today. Work crews are busy at the site of the new long-term care facility in Swift Current. We bring you an update in today's top story. Back in September, sod was turned on the new $108.5 million long-term care facility in Swift Current. Now several months later, and crews have been busy moving soil and preparing to set in the cement pilings for the building. And as local residents await the new 225-bed facility, the community's 20% share of $15.7 million is yet to be raised. You know what, it's not really an option to not have the money. Um, you know, we're short uh, 2.7, so we've raised uh, 87% of the funding, and uh, we do need to raise the full 20%. And uh, every other community in the province that has long-term care has had to raise that 20%, and we're not special, so we will have to raise that. Bragg adds that in the new year, additional meetings will be held with surrounding RMs and other regional partners to try and finalize the remaining shortfall of $2.7 million. While indicating the fundraising for the long-term care facility is different from that of the new Cypress Regional Hospital. With the regional hospital, of course, it was the entire region that we were looking for support from. A uh, long-term care facility is for Swift Current and surrounding area for the people that would reasonably be accessing long-term care in Swift Current. So how, how far of a radius would that be? Like, uh... Well, I don't know if I could give you a radius, but I can tell you that it's, uh, you know, based on historical usage, like we can actually tell who's accessing long-term care in Swift Current and from what communities they're coming from. And as the monetary issue is handled on the community front, work is taking place behind the scenes to ensure the room seen in this mock-up video will meet the needs of residents moving into the facility. And as far as staffing, the Health Region CEO states they're working to ensure the proper staffing numbers are in place for opening day. We're running a pilot over at the Prairie Pioneers Lodge and what we're doing there is we've taken half of the building and created two 10-bed houses and we're trying different staffing models to see where we need the staff at what time of the day on what shift and then what kinds of things do they need to be doing on those shifts to ensure that we're able to uh, staff our houses properly and uh, ensure we've got staff at the right time again and in the right place. So. Uh, we're really fortunate, I think, to be able to do a bit of testing of, of this model of care uh, in a different kind of an environment. So we're excited by the fact that we have a year and a half to continue to work through and really know what are the processes look like, what are the staff going to be doing, how do those routines start to change when you move into a small 10-bed home as opposed to a 40-bed institution. If all goes according to plan, the new long-term care facility in Swift Current will open its doors in the spring of 2016, adjacent to the Cypress Regional Hospital. What can you do to brighten a person's day? How would you feel doing something good for a person in need? What if a single thought could change a person's life? What can you do to make someone's life better? Helping others is the greatest gift we can give. Give for good. To say thank you and to spread some Christmas cheer, our classroom will be making and delivering thank you cards for community workers in our city including police, fire, and EMS workers. We are spreading Christmas cheer around our community to remind others that people care about them. Fundraise for money with a bake sale, selling bracelets, and lemonade, but we have some other stuff we can do to help out too. 
will hand the money to the ABS, CB, and Network Channel 2 in the Philippines. So they can give the money to the Philippines. And we're going to give food and books to the safe shelter. We're doing a dodgeball for our event, um, a tournament. So it's all for like um, the classes in middle years, so anyone can join. All the money t that we get towards the, um, the dodgeball tournament is going to the foundation of kids sport. It makes me feel good because I'm doing something for other people around the world. It's kind of showing compassion and just helping other people out. If people are in other countries and fighting war and stuff, they can have a chance to play a sport and have a lot of fun. Because we all carry an invisible bucket, and if we be nice to each other, we'll all fill each other's buckets. And if we be mean to other people, we'll, we won't fill other people's buckets, and it will dump yours too. You've heard how we plan to give for good. Now it's your turn. What will you do? What will you do? What will you do? Wishing you and yours a Merry Christmas and Happy New Year from the management and staff of Stoop Pharmacy in Leader. Wishing the citizens of Swift Current the very best this holiday season and into the new year from Mayor Schaefer, City Council and staff of the City of Swift Current. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year from Gus, Louie and George at the K Steakhouse and Motel. Book your Christmas party or New Year's celebration today. 2014 was a banner year for the City of Swift Current when it came to building permit numbers. In this report, we take a closer look at those stats. As the year quickly draws to a close, construction companies were kept busy in Swift Current with a number of projects. From the completion of two new schools to a variety of residential construction, a total of over $66 million in building permits were recorded to the end of November. And when broken down, the numbers indicate a vast increase for 2014 compared to last year. Over $40 million for residential construction. Over $18 million in permits for commercial industrial areas. And over $7 million for institutional government projects. Overall making 2014 the third best year for building permits in the city's history. Which to me is really telling. Uh, um, you know, investors have confidence in our, uh, in our economy, right, uh, um, to, to invest those kinds of dollars. And that's going to continue with some of the stuff that... Uh, uh, is coming. I, I, I really like the, the residential numbers, uh, up significantly again, uh, as I said, and since 2007, 850 homes. Um, you know, statisticians use kind of two to three people per home, so, you know, we're looking at uh, 15 to, to 2,500 people uh, um, very easily just on, on new home construction uh, in terms of population growth since 2007 in our community. You know, 10 years ago, if somebody would have said Swift Current would have uh, a half a billion dollars in total construction uh, by the end of 2014, um, I'm not sure if anybody would have believed it, but it's certainly something that's pretty exciting. And with only seven acres remaining in the Monroe Industrial Park area, the new expansion of 18 additional lots will further enhance the opportunities for more construction in this corner of the city. These new lots in the Monroe Industrial Park area are set to be ready for prospective buyers by 2016. Historically, other positive years for building permits in the city of Swift Current include 2012 at $83.6 million dollars with the start of construction of two new schools, and going back to 2007 with $70 million in permits, thanks to the casino construction. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year from the board, management, and staff of Innovation Credit Union. Wishing you the best this holiday season and into the new year from the town of Maple Creek, Southwest Saskatchewan's hub for holiday shopping and dining. Wishing you and yours a Merry Christmas and Happy New Year from David Anderson, Member of Parliament for Cypress Hills Grasslands. Season's greetings and the best in the coming year from Yogi Huga Bear, MLA for Wood River.
Swift Current Fire Department has unveiled a new emergency alert system. We have all the details in this report. The Swift Current Fire Department is going high tech and adding another avenue of getting its emergency information out to the public. With the launch of the city's new website, local residents can now sign up for emergency alerts from the fire department to be notified of various emergency scenarios in the community. So you can have text, uh, voicemail, email, uh, TTY for hearing impaired, uh, any of those types of things. That there, there's about five different ways that you can get me uh, messages, get them on your landline, your cell phone, uh, home, at work, whatever. You also put the location in so that if, uh, for instance, there was a water break and we had to shut the water down on your block, we can circle that block and send a message to all the people on that block saying the water will be turned off at 2 o'clock this afternoon so we can fix the water main break. Pilon adds that they've contracted the service for approximately $6,500 a year and are now following the lead of other centers and being more proactive with the community. Saskatoon has been on board with it for about two years now. Uh, they've actually got it fully working just last May and did their first test then. Uh, that test, they sent out about 90,000 messages in uh, about two and a half hours. But when you look at the, at the issues that it could save us, um, for instance, we had a uh, uh, drinking water advisory that was issued last fall. And uh, it was in the area that I live in. It was issued on a Friday. I never heard about it till Tuesday. And I work for the city. And, you know, so, uh, you know, I'm still alive. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I didn't get sick. That's not the point. Uh, the point is that somebody in that area did get sick. We could have some liability because we didn't get the message out. Subscribers to the Fire Department Emergency Alerts will only receive messages of this matter. And their personal information will not be shared with other agencies. Further details on emergency alert subscriptions are available on the city's website. Holiday greetings from the Cypress Health region. On behalf of everyone here at Cypress Health, I would like to extend our best wishes to you and your families during this festive season. It's a time for family and friends to get together and enjoy the spirit of the season. The holidays are a time to reflect upon where we've been and those things for which we're grateful. Our wish for you is that 2015 will bring you great happiness, health and prosperity. May the magic and wonder of this holiday season stay with you throughout the coming year. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year from the Cypress Health Region. Well, this brings to a close another episode of Southwest TV News, reporting the stories that matter to you. We always welcome your news tips. You can always reach us here by phone at our studio or by email to contact us at southwesttvnews.com. Also, be sure to join us daily online for the latest news from across Southwest Saskatchewan and so much more at mylocaltv.ca. And be sure to follow us on a range of social media. Thanks for joining us here today. I'm Carol Andrews.